If you followed the other lessons in this course, you'll know by now how to create a simple project in Visual Studio. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create a calculator program written in C. Even though this will be quite short, it's our first step towards real-world C programming. I'm Hugh. This is a course in C programming with Visual Studio. To follow all the lessons in order, bookmark the playlist which is shown under this video. This is the Hello World program from the last lesson. If you want to follow along now, either create a new C project, as I showed earlier, or just delete this line of code. So now you have a program with just an empty main function. And as I explained in the last lesson, the program must have this hash include directive in order to be able to use the printf function to display text at the system prompt. I'm going to write a tax calculator that can take a value or subtotal of some item, and then it will work out how much tax is due on that item. This might be some kind of sales tax, or as in Britain and Europe, value added tax. And then it will add that tax to the subtotal to give the full sale price or grand total. Let's start coding that. First, I need to declare some variables. In this course, I'm assuming you already have some programming experience in some other language, and that you understand things like variables and assignments. If you don't, then you need to follow my complete programming course. The link to that is also under this video. Now that course explains all the essential features of programming in general. So now I need three variables, subtotal, tax and grand total. These are all declared as doubles, floating point numbers, grand total. Um, because of course, oops, wait a minute, double, I have to declare its type, because of course I want them all to be capable of holding floating point numbers so that I can have values such as one dollar and fifty cents or a hundred pounds, twenty pence and so on. Let me just, to save time, paste in the rest of the code. So I also, yes, I also need a variable called tax rate. I'll make it a variable for now. In later programs, I might change that, but let me just leave it this way for now. So here I set the tax rate to 17.5%. Uh, that's a zero, 1.75. And, and I've added a, a subtotal of 250. That's the price without tax of a certain product. And then to calculate the tax that's owing to on it, I multiply the subtotal by the tax rate. And grand total is just an addition of those two values, the subtotal plus the tax. And then I have to display the result, and that's where printf comes in. So in the last lesson, I used printf to display a simple string, but in fact, printf can be a bit cleverer than that. It lets me embed values into a string, and you can see an example of how I do that here. So I put this list of values right at the end, that's after the string itself. These are the values I want to display. They're a list separated by commas. And in the string itself, I put these placeholders marked with the percent sign like this. So these placeholders are called format specifiers. And the F here tells printf that the value I want to display is a floating point number. And the two shows that I want to display up to two digits after the decimal point. Now, there are other format specifiers that I could have used to display different types of value. For example, percent %d for a decimal integer or percent %s for a string. I just have to make sure that the specifiers in the string match the number and the type of the values that I've placed in the list after the string itself. So let's try running the program now. And this is what I see. So you can see that it's printed on the top line. Uh, the tax on 250 is 43.75, so the grand total is 293.75. The problem here is that since the subtotal is compiled into the program itself, it will only ever be able to calculate that one value. Now, obviously, it would be far more useful if I could enter any value. In order to do that, I need to have some way of reading a value entered by the user when the program's running. I'll show how to do that in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. To be notified whenever I upload new lessons, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. 
To follow this course in order, bookmark the playlist which is shown under this video.